Good evening, everyone. I welcome you, and I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with you. The Leafs and Canadians are playing tonight, folks. I thought we just finished all that, but anyway, it's always hockey season in this country. So here we are. I welcome you to our celebration of the Mass for the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Um, you know, tonight's gospel might be a meeting place for the uh, Christians and the Taliban. You hear the, the readings tonight, of the gospel tonight especially. Jesus is talking in pretty, pretty gory detail, pretty gory terms about uh, the cost of discipleship. And, it, and in a way that I think the Taliban would appreciate. <laughs> but Jesus is not speaking literally. He is speaking, you know, figuratively. He's exaggerating. It's like that old saying, uh, if I've told you once, I've told you a million times. Don't exaggerate. Well, Jesus is exaggerating in the gospel, but in order to make a point, a very good point, about the cost of discipleship. So, uh, let us prepare ourselves to hear and respond to the gospel message and to the gift of the Eucharist as we acknowledge our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us be seated now for the reading of God's holy word. The first reading is a reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud, took some of the spirit that was on Moses, and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, my Lord Moses stopped them. But Moses said to him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. 
the word of the Lord. The precepts of the Lord are right and give joy to the heart. Precepts of the Lord are right and give joy. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right and give joy. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The precepts of the Lord are right and give joy to the Lord. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect unminded errors? Clear me from hidden faults. The precepts of the Lord are right. Keep back your servant also from this insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. The precepts of the Lord are right and the joy to the heart. Second reading is a reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich people, weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver has rusted, rusted, and their rust will be evidence against you, and it will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure from the last days. Listen, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields which kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous one who does not resist you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After Jesus had finished teaching the disciples, John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. So it's funny how, uh, well, it's not funny at all, really, but uh, when you read the, the Gospels, you know, every time you read the Gospel over, you get something else out of it. And uh, having read it just 10 seconds ago, I, I must admit, I, something else struck me in that reading that uh, I hadn't thought of when I was putting my homily together. But, so may call for a rewrite tonight in between periods, of course. There's a very famous picture of Jesus in St. Paul's Cathedral in London, England. 
It's the painting that is based on the passage from the book of Revelation. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears me calling and opens the door, I will come in to share his meal side by side with him. In this painting, there is no handle on the outside, no handle, no doorknob on the outside door. So there is no way for Jesus to enter as he stands there and knocks on this door, this painting depicting Jesus knocking on the door in the cathedral in London. There's no, no way for Jesus to enter unless someone from the inside decides to open the door and let him in. The painting is called The Light of the World. Not long ago, the painting was sent out for cleaning, having accumulated decades of dirt and grime, grease. When the restorers took the picture out of the frame to clean it, they saw something they had not expected. On the bottom, underneath the molding, the artist had written the words, Forgive me, Lord Jesus, that I kept you waiting so long. The artist had known of Jesus for a long time, and he knew Jesus was knocking. He knew there was more. He regretted that it had taken so long for him to answer that door, to let Jesus in, to make the decision to follow Jesus in a more radical way. But having made that decision, he obviously found a freedom, a peace, and an energy that he had never known before. And he regretted not having opened the door earlier. In today's Gospel of St. Mark, from St. Mark, Jesus uses pretty strong imagery to get his point across. Being a disciple of Christ requires of us a deeper commitment, a real leap of faith a willingness to part with ways of thinking and acting that are contrary to the kingdom of God, contrary to the gospel of Christ. We need to do this individually, personally, and we need to do this even as an institution, as the church, confronting sins and sinful structures and structures that are not conducive to the the proclamation of the gospel today. We need to do this with courage and faith, making deep and lasting changes. And there is a synod going on right now, I believe, in Rome, a synod on synodality, the Pope wanting the church to be more in dialogue with itself, wanting to hear from the faithful about the significant issues that we are dealing with as Catholics today. And the Pope wants every diocese to initiate some kind of a synodal process uh, in order to, uh, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit more clearly and not to keep the Spirit at, at arm's length. And in this way, we can, respond not, we can respond more readily and we can address ways in which the church is failing to be effective today. So whether you call that sin or whether, whatever you want to call it, the shortcomings of this community of faith that we belong to. We need to do this periodically. The church needs to continually be reforming itself, reconverting, we could say, to Christ. So don't take this gospel passage literally, but do take it seriously. If you want to get healthy physically, and we have to cut out certain things from our diet, like that 275 gram bag of potato chips that we eat every day. If we want to get healthy spiritually, we have to do the same thing. What habits, what deeds, what attitudes do we need to step away from so that Jesus himself <clears throat> can bring his gifts more deeply into our lives? It involves a stepping away, but it also involves a surrendering to the sense of surrendering to the power of Christ who can, in his love for us, do more than we can do for ourselves. Isn't this the first step in the Alcoholics Anonymous program? In the second reading from the letter of St. James, 
James is warning the members of his own Christian community that wealth on earth does not translate into wealth in heaven. As one spiritual author says, when we die, if we want to get into heaven, one of the things we'll need isn't a big bank account, but a letter, a letter of reference from the poor. And as for those uh, surprise prophets in the first reading and the, the freelance preacher in the gospel, this really speaks to me. I used to uh, secretly judge others on their church affiliation and their commitment, especially Catholics. But I've tried to step away from that attitude because I realize it's quite futile and pointless. So many people have been raised without a faith these days or have such a limited understanding of Christianity, what it's all about. Now, I try to see the good in people. I try to notice their commitment to the community, to people in need. I look for their generosity of heart. And I take that as a sign that if they really knew Christ, they would follow him. So folks, don't chop off troublesome body parts. Ask Christ to, to heal them instead. Don't put your trust in RRSPs. Use what you have to serve those who are truly in need. And don't judge others, whatever their faith or lack thereof, because deep down inside, they just might be on your side. I invite you to stand now for the prayers of the faithful. My brothers and sisters, called to a prophetic mission by the Spirit of God, let us pray that the lives of Christians will proclaim the truth of the gospel as we intercede for the mission of the church, all migrants and refugees, and the salvation of all people. For the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops and his pastoral work on this feast day of Canadian martyrs, and for the outpouring of the Spirit's prophet gifts on all God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the priests of the Sons of Mary, Mother of Mercy, who minister in this archdiocese as they celebrate the golden anniversary of their foundation, and for the church's mission to be a community of faith and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the little ones who have been hurt or scandalized, for tolerance, forgiveness, and generosity among all disciples of Jesus, and for joyful voices to proclaim God's presence and love to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a welcome throughout the world for all migrants and refugees as they seek freedom and, and a new homeland, and for all crying out for just wages and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for those who have died recently, in memory of Ford Cooper and all who experienced loss, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Folks, uh, the word seems to be on the street that Bill Fonten passed away. That, have you heard that? Is that it? Yeah. So for Bill, repose of his soul, the consolation of his family, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Welcome all who draw near to you, O God, that moved by the Spirit, our eyes may be opened to the urgency of the gospel, to dispel the forces of injustice and bring hope and joy to all people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. 
cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks and an exaltation we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Using the second acclamation, the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and Paul, the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
I just want to mention that uh, this Thursday is uh, Truth and Reconciliation Day in Canada. See one orange shirt here today. So on that day, on this Thursday, you're asked to, we're encouraged to take the day as a day of reflection upon uh, the history of our, our relationship with our Indigenous brothers and sisters and also to, uh, to go online and to uh, reflect on the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. You can easily find it on the computer there on uh, the website. So uh, I encourage you to do that. And there is uh, next Saturday as well, there's, I believe, a powwow being held at uh, the local high school here, to which I think, it, I think it's open to the public. So um, we should try to make this week a special week, especially as Catholics, we have a special link to our indigenous people, both in the negative sense, I guess, given the residential schools, and in a positive sense as well. So, uh, so let us take advantage of this week to, uh, to educate ourselves and to deepen our sense of commitment to the well-being of our brothers and sisters. Please stand now for the concluding prayer. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Please be seated. Now let us from this table rise to mm -hmm.